Hey, this is Kedrin at Ilphonic, and today I'm going to quickly show you occlusion planes and how to use them in Nexus. Occlusion is the process of making sure something behind a wall or below a floor isn't being rendered. You want this to happen so there's not any unnecessary overhead in your poly count, draw prim count, you know, lighting complexity, so much stuff. You just don't want what's on the other side of this wall rendering. Whenever we use these in uh, Nexus, we use their planes, and uh, they're, they're called occluded planes, and you just place them around your map as entities within the game world itself. We generally, you know, organize this by putting occlusion in its own layer. Once we have occlusion layer set, we'll try to figure out what's the best way to place them in our world. In CTF Meow, the level's very blocky, so this is actually easy to do and um, quick to show because occlusion planes are just a straight plane They're, they can't be complex shapes or anything like that and you always want to make sure your occlusion planes are hidden inside the render mesh and not poking out you got a occlusion plane poking out of a render mesh there's a chance a player could actually come around the corner look through the occlusion plane and a whole bunch of the world will be missing so before we get started, let's talk about setting where your entity is going to be placed. Whenever you control shift left click somewhere in the game world, it basically says if I'm going to place an entity, it's going to be on um, as far as like Z distance, it's going to be at that point. And that's really important so you're not placing objects far away somewhere else in the train, another spot of the map. Up here on the top of the toolbar, you got XYZ and the XY axis constraints. You want to make sure you're not on the Z whenever you're going to place a new object down. So control shift click and go into the area field and choose an occluder XY. This will basically let you place down an XY occluder plane which is used for floors and ceilings. Whenever I click four times the occluder plane is created for me. Now up to this point I can move the plane around and do whatever I need to do with it. First thing you'll notice is that I want this whole f floor to be covered up by this occluder plane. This can be easily done by clicking the edit shape button on the side of the screen, selecting a point on the occluder plane and moving it around. It's really important to note that you can't select more po multiple points at any time and that the axis doesn't move to a point whenever you have it selected. You'll know what point you have selected because it's pink compared to the rest of the object, which is going to be the object's color. When moving the points around on an XY plane, make sure that you're either using the X, the Y, or the XY constraints for movement. I strongly recommend only using one constraint at a time so you can very accurately place your occluder planes. So I'll click and drag and move these so my entire area is covered. Okay, now that this occluder plane is set, I can move it down in the surface, and that gives me a big, uh, much broader range of occlusion to happen because I generally put Z planes anywhere there's a vertical wall. Moving it one unit below the ground provides a, you know, just a good enough range for you to be able to see this entire floor below the floor I'm currently in is being occluded. If I go underneath the occlusion plane, you'll see a pop in. A further demonstration of why you don't want it to go outside of the render mesh is if this plane is poking out. You can see it start to pop out objects. So you want to make sure it's hidden nice inside your render mesh. This can get pretty complex if you have a very organic environment with lots of curves. Uh, or concave shapes. Um, you just want to f try to find that happy medium within the mesh to make sure it renders properly. Now we want to show you the 
occluder Z plane and this is for use for walls and it's only made out of two points before we get started again make sure you put the place where you want your entity to go you'll notice there's not the two points at the top of the plane and instead that's controlled here on the right in the height field I'll set that to 10 to match the height of this area. I'm going back into edit shape again, selecting each point and manually moving them to match the area. Once I have the occluder plane where I want it to be, I'm going to move it in the wall just like I did the floor. Now you can see, just going inside, poking inside the render mesh, the whole outside area of the map is being included out. And the same goes for the other side too. So it's a two-way surface. And that basically describes occlusion planes and how you should use them. We understand it's a very tedious process to go through your map and make sure your map's completely covered in these things, but the gains are significant and you should definitely take the time to do it. Alright, now that I showed you some basic occlusion plane building in Meow, I want to show you what they look like in a more complete map. Even though the Kavasari asset set isn't that complex still, there's definitely a lot more complexity going on in the environment with lights and other objects that you want to make sure aren't being rendered. So if I hide all my layers except for the occlusion layer in Vigor, you'll see I practically rebuilt the entire map using these occlusion planes. What I really wanted to show you is a very important tip with occlusion planes is making sure that they're crisscrossing. For example, in this case, and if I show the rest of the map again, you'll see these are all subset within the mesh, but even as doing so, they're all crisscrossing. And the reason why I want that, and I want them to overlap, is there's zero chance for the occluders to reveal an open gap between the occlusion planes. You don't want that to happen because every time it does go through a gap it has to re-render the entire scene and then send that right back to the occlusion buffer when you get behind the occlusion plane again. So it just adds a little kind of finesse to make sure you're always staying on top of what's being rendered in your scene at all times. Now if you're dealing with a more complex shape, for example like the cylinder, there is no cylindrical volumes to use for occlusion within the engine, so what I literally did was simply create two Z planes that form a crisscross right down the middle.